So now's a good time to give this console a sanding. We get a mask. All right, so I got these two drink holders that I want to drill in right now. Box is all sanded. And I'm just going to put, put this where I think it belongs. Sometimes these hole saws have a tendency to uh, do something you don't want them to do. The bigger, the bigger they are, the trickier. Do that again carefully. All right, that works. All right, now I can move on to, uh, I want to mix us some epoxy coat the inside that doesn't have anything on it and um, eventually get to doing the outside of this a second coat. Now I got the console all prepped, sanded, wiped down and I'm going to spread some fairing compound. I don't need a whole bunch, just want to hit some little low areas and I like using this, this six inch steel knife as opposed to a uh, um, regular this is a spreader that you put bondo on or bearing compound but I'm used to using this so it works for me I'm, not, I'm putting it on very thin just filling a couple low holes I, I'm not going to go over the whole entire console I don't think it needs it So it's the following day, 
And I'm just going to try to give this a hand sand. While the sanding is complete, took a little effort, but uh, with a combination of block, hand sandpaper, and the orbital, I was able to use this on some areas that uh, the ferrin compound was a little thicker. Uh, you don't want to get you don't want to get near that near these outside edges because you'll just burn right through the fiberglass easy. So you just gotta gently uh, hand sand around that the radiuses. But now I'll get it cleaned up and uh, paints the next thing. So there I go. So I have some nicer weather. Good for painting outside. Um, the roller I'm using is a, a real fine nap uh, wool type roller, six inch. Find that works good. Foam rollers also, but they don't hold much paint at all. Um, I'm using Total Bolt Wet Edge. It's a one pot polyurethane paint. We're going to need at least two coats on this. Okay, first coat complete. Uh, there is a little bit of runs in it. Maybe I could have thinned it out a little more. But anyway, I'll have to take this inside tonight because um, this, this paint doesn't like cold weather. It just takes longer to set up. So this is how it's looking after its first coat. So the second coat of white is done. I thinned it out a little bit and rolled it out with the short nap roller. The next thing I'm gonna do, uh, I'll let this air out for a little while, then I'll get it back in the garage, and let it uh, set up over a couple days, and then we'll get it installed in the boat. So this boat needs some rod holders, and this is the type I'm gonna use. Brand is Scotty, and uh, they're fully adjustable. And I'm going to mount them um, in four locations. And they're going to be kind of like outriggers uh, to get cover a better fishing area. So this is the type of mounts I'm going to use. They make a couple different type. This is the flush mount where you'd cut through a deck or something like that. Um, the other type uh, kind of screws on the interior and that kind of mounts like that and you can plug your rod holder right in that but I'm gonna drill a hole in this block that I put in a long time ago and um, that's an inch and three-eighths hole and so I already drilled uh, two on that side and I'm gonna show you how I did that so this little block is four inches so I'm just coming to the center of that and I'm coming from the inside of the plywood side. I'm coming back three quarters of an inch and that should give me a little bit, I should just come maybe an eighth inch away from the side and it's going to cut into the, some of this in, in whale but this is made out of PVC and I'm not worried about that um, breaking. If it was a hardwood that would be a stress point because I'm taking something out of that. But um, I'm confident that this is going to work out good. So one more thing. Um, this is block is also a good place if you wanted to put 
oar locks if you're going to row this boat. You could uh, have two stations to row it from. Two sets of oar locks if you didn't even need a motor for any reason. If you're in very shallow water. But we're going with four rod holders. So let me grab the drill and I'll show you how I did that. I made a little jig to keep it um, going straight. So I'm just going to punch that. I'm going to start a quarter inch hole right there. This is my hole saw jig. Uh, I used the hole saw on a drill press just to get a nice straight drill through that so it doesn't wander. Because uh, hole saws have a tendency to uh, wander a little bit. So I'm going to clamp this in place, put the hole saw in there. Okay, it's my inch and three eighths hole saw. All right, so the hole saw is bottoming out right now. It can only drill so deep. So I gotta get rid of some material right here. Okay, the tip just made it through of the hole saw, so I know I'm close. I'm going to go s not too much pressure right now so I don't blow the whole bottom of that out. So. That's four drilled. So I'm installing the flush mount for the rod holders now. And the hole has been uh, sealed with epoxy. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, these have a, uh, an arrow pointing inboard on them. And I'm going to put that in there and pilot one hole. I'm using a self-centering bit, which is just a, that's a bit inside of this little uh, sleeve that's spring-loaded. In whale is the PVC decking, so that goes in pretty easily. Now that I have one screw in there, I can pilot the rest of these. I want to make these holes a little bit bigger in this oak block.
where I have this oak, I want to use a little bit of wax on there. So the reason for that arrow inboard, that's the way you can install this rod holder facing inboard because it has a little notch in there what lines up. And then it you spin it to the out position you want to use it in. And that prevents it from accidentally coming loose, falling in. And you put it into several notches. These are fully adjustable and the angle is fully adjustable with this knob and to remove you have to spin it 180 and then pop it out so then store this part away when you're not using it so I'm getting ready to permanently attach this console uh, first thing I did ran some tape around the outside edges so when I spread my uh, adhesive this is a 4200, 3M 4200 adhesive. Um, I don't get it where it shouldn't be. And then uh, I took my counter drill with countersink, and I'm putting um, I'm putting number 10 inch and a quarter flathead screws in. So those are all pre-drilled. And next thing I'm going to do is spread the 4200 out. So I'm going to tilt this right back. Then I clean up. So now it's installed. Not to come out soon. So I'm getting close to the end of this build right here and uh, now's a great time to install this glove box. So I just want to make sure it's um, the same distance. So I'm just going to split the difference and um, put a pilot hole and screw it in. Anytime I uh, want to center something in a hole, I usually push it over to one side, mark that, push it over the other, and then I'll just split the difference of those two. And same thing top and bottom. Check out the fit. Well, I 
I made it the right size, that's good. I'll do my centering technique again. Not much there, good. Pretty good, just the way it is. Split the difference there. Put a pilot hole or two. So the boat's out of the garage and on the truck and going to get his motor. Yep. Bye-bye. Let's build another one. <laughs>